Okay, so this is just a quick snapshot of my work. Um, it's all in progress. Sorry about the mess and the uh, rat's nest of wires, but this is really just a snapshot as I'm progressing here in my experimentation. So um, I've limited the DC to DC converter. Um, I've got that out of the system now. I'm using a full wave uh, rectifier. Um, I'm using a third winding on the pot core transformer. So that's a little different and uh, Give me a chance, folks. I'll get to all of that and a schematic and all of this here uh, shortly. But I just wanted to show a quick update as to where I'm at. I've got a single electrolytic capacitor now, and it's a 50-volt, uh, uh, 10,000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. So right now I've got the circuit connected to the battery. And uh, if you followed my work on any of this in the past, you'll know that when I normally when I disconnect from the battery with any of the jewel ringer type circuits, you get a, a, a tightening up. Um, here on the frequency. And that continues until the uh, voltage in the capacitor is depleted and then the circuit dies out. Well, in this particular configuration, um, with this particular transformer design, I was able to come up with a configuration in which when I disconnect from the battery, there's incredible stability um, on the circuit. So let me break um, my connection here to the battery and I just point out that you watch the scope as I do that. So I'm off the battery now. So as soon as I saw that, I knew I had something uh, special going on because I have done, you know, hundreds and hundreds of hours of research on jewel ringer type circuits, and I've never had one run with this kind of stability like that. Um, in the past, any time I disconnected from the load, you just see a real, you know, tightening up of the uh, waveform there. Now, in this particular configuration, it's, it in no way goes, you know, for hours and hours. It does taper off, but it goes for a surprisingly long time. And what you do notice here is that the uh, the length of the spike shortens up as it tapers off. So let me uh, charge it back up here with the battery. Sorry, I'm trying to do this here while I'm on the uh, while I'm videoing. Okay, so charge it back up with the battery, and you see the longer spike. So that is tapering off. But uh, that was very exciting to me because this is a very large load. So I'm going to switch down to a smaller uh, LED load and show you what the circuit can do in that configuration. Okay, so I worked all night on this particular uh, transformer, experimenting with it, taking it apart, putting it together in different configurations. And I have seen some amazing uh, things with it. Let me just show you its current configuration. It's, it's the same as I was working with last night um, when I was running the larger loads um, and the wave frequency and everything was staying uh, the same on the scope. So I've continued to experiment with this and uh, let me just show you where it's at currently and I'll explain a little bit of what's going on. So I've got a 9 volt battery here. Um, the only capacitor in the circuit is this polyester film capacitor and I think that's uh, important to note but let me just uh, start the uh, circuit here. Okay, see I just quick touched on that polyester film cap. The circuit's running. This circuit, um, depending on how you have it built up, will run in a really wide voltage range. I've had this thing run on anything from oh, 0.8 volts up to 40 volts. Let me go ahead and put more voltage in the uh, circuit, and I'll show you how the LEDs do run brighter when you run it with uh, a higher voltage. So you can see it's pulsing along there currently. Let me put some more voltage in it and uh, show you what it does then. All right, so that's doubled the voltage and I'll let it run there for a while. So um, I worked on this all night, like I was saying, um, around, I don't know, 12, one o'clock <clears throat> last night before I miniaturized this down, I had this running in a situation in a setup where it would run indefinitely on a polyester film cap. Um, I literally ran out of patience waiting for it to stop and that's why I decided to take it apart and uh, solder it down on a board like this. Now, unfortunately, in doing that, I had to take apart the transformer. So I opened up the transformer um, to mount it on the board, as you see here, and I've never been able to get it put. I've never been able to get it operating like it was operating before. And I, I know why that is, so I'm going to have to wind another transformer. Um, when I wound this transformer, the, the first set of windings on my primary. I wound it directly onto the copper uh, foil 
and the copper foil has some sharp edges and the copper foil in taking this apart to tight fit has scratched into the enamel on the wire and I know that because this side goes to the main primary and when I pull and shake on this I can either stop the circuit from running or change its behavior if you have it hooked up to a small multimeter see right there it stopped and then when I change it back to here it starts running again <clears throat> so there's some shorts and some cutouts going on in this that are messing up the operation. So unfortunately I'm going to wind another transformer. But you can see here it's it's been going for quite a while and it's still pulsing those uh, little LEDs. Now there's also some points back here. I'm going to touch behind the board and add a little resistance. You can see that it gets brighter. And that's kind of acting as a virtual ground. Right now this circuit's not grounded. I did experiment last night with some grounding modes where I could run the uh, LEDs much brighter with them grounded again uh, indefinitely so there it is with my finger off just pulsing along and I'll go ahead and, and kind of give a virtual ground here in the back again and you can see that it, it can get a little brighter I accidentally touched the transistor and shorted it out let me start it up again the um, circuit right now I think is pulling you know it's way down in, in the under 10 microamps um, even less like I said last night when I had this thing running in the super efficient mode it was not even pulling a single microamp not even half a microamp I've never seen a circuit do that before so obviously I'm very excited I'm going to instead of taking this particular transformer apart I'm, I've got the parts to wind another one so I'm gonna wind up another one exactly like this one and uh, hopefully I don't lose uh, any of the fact and I can reproduce it. I already tried on a smaller uh, pot cord transformer and this one did not work the same. So it may be, uh, there may be a lot of particular variables to get an effect like this to work. But anyway, that's it on a polyester film cap. I'll switch to another capacitor here, show you how it runs on electrolytic and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, so I've got it running on an electrolytic capacitor now, so the polyester film capacitor. This is a 47 microfarad capacitor. The reason it's so large is it's a very high voltage capacitor. You can see here that's a 450 volt. Yeah, 450 volt, 47 microfarad um, capacitor. But anyway, just wanted to uh, show the circuit running on electrolytic. Um, uh, you can see the transformer issue. I've really got to wind another transformer and try to get this running like I had it running last night. But anyway, just an update. It's a, definitely a work in progress, but definitely running in a way and in a configuration that I've never seen before. And uh, if you've ever done any experimenting with stuff like this, um, you know how long you can normally light LEDs off electrolytic capacitors, let alone polyester film capacitors. So, you know, the the eureka moment for me last night was when I had the uh, circuit running indefinitely on this polyester film capacitor. And I'm going to do whatever I need to do to get back to that point. And uh, so anyway, definitely fun experimenting. Um, let's all keep experimenting with this stuff again. This